organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on this morning edition of Daily Iowan TV, University of Iowa officials are responding to continued concerns on campus. Find out how next. And later in the broadcast, we'll give you the details of a transportation change that could affect a large number of UI students. Iowa football earned some all Big Ten honors. And a recap of the Iowa women's basketball matchup against the number one ranked Fighting Irish coming up. Your latest news, weather, and sports coverage is just moments away. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good morning and thanks for watching Daily Iowan TV. I'm Keaton Fuller. Wednesday afternoon, the UI Department of Public Safety sent out an email alerting students of a reported sexual assault. The victim says she was attacked Tuesday evening by an unknown male while she was heading to her car at the Hawkeye storage lot. The victim also said she believes another person may have stopped the assault, but that she was unable to see her attacker because he ran away. In the email, UI officials included a response plan that calls for increased security at the Hawkeye lot and adding more lighting to the area. This is the fifth reported sexual assault of the semester. In city news, the city of Iowa City welcomes the new city manager today, Ashley Monroe. Monroe will fill in the role that has been left open since July. Monroe was promoted by city manager Jeff Fruin for the position due to her background in city administration. Her past experiences holding several positions at the village of Hoffman Estates in Illinois has provided her with the much needed experience to fulfill her new role as assistant city manager. Having a broad range of experience, the city is excited for Monroe to begin her work here in Iowa City. While Monroe is set to begin work today, President-elect Donald Trump says he is stepping back from his work with his business. President-elect Trump tweeted Wednesday afternoon that he plans to separate himself from his business in order to focus on his job as our nation's president. The news comes as an answered question to many politicians who are concerned with Trump's potential conflict of interest with being a world leader and running a global company. In the series of tweets, Trump said he will release more details during a news conference on December 15th. As President-elect Trump moves forward with his plans for office, his opposing candidates are still working to keep him out of the White House. Jill Stein, who ran for the Green Party, requested for a recount of the votes in Michigan to be done by hand. This adds to her list of requested recounts, which already include Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Stein says the goal of the recount is to ensure the election process was not interrupted by hackers or fraudulent voting. This graph shows just how narrow Trump's win in the state of Michigan was. Stein will have to pay for the recount, which could cost up to a million dollars. Recounting in the state could start by Friday of this week. The Pentecrest lawn is often well decorated and can be appreciated by faculty and students alike. But who plays the part of making the decoration so happy? Daily Iowa TV reporter Haley Van Dyke went to find out. From time to time, the Capitol placed decorations out front of the east and west sides of its lawn. The Pentecrest is known for its decorations, and thanks to many student groups and organizations, many college and local community members are able to see the town get ready for many events such as homecoming and so much more. A Porva Rick Ward knew exactly who to contact to set things up. Goes through um, the office of the vice president, I believe, Pam Krogmeyer, permission from her, and then we purchase the flags ourselves using like funds that we get through like UISG. Um, that we put on the old Capitol, which there may be some tomorrow for the reading of names, that's through Trina Roberts, who's the director of the old Capitol Museums. The Capitol is something many people pass each day. A lot of time and commitment goes into each decoration. If anyone has become interested in helping out, there are many places to go. We decide how we want to decorate it pre like several months in advance usually. We do with like the actual museums. Um, you go to the director of the Pentecrest Museums. If it's any any like Pentecrest um, like lawn stuff, then you go to Pam Krogmeyer. 
Reporting from where you've seen many decorations right in front of the Pentecrest, I'm Haley Van Dyke. Now back to you. I've got to say the weather on the Pentecrest this morning was awfully chilly as we kicked off December here in Iowa City. To find out what we can expect the rest of the week, we've got Noah Gowdy standing by in the weather studio. Noah? Well, Keaton, that chilly weather is going to be sticking around for quite a while from here on out. So now let's get to today's forecast. Right now we are feeling a chill in the air with temperatures around 35 degrees and it won't be moving up much more by this afternoon with temperatures around 38 degrees and overcast skies. This evening, those, those overcast skies are going to stick around and the temperature is going to drop down to 35 degrees. Tomorrow morning, you can expect this temperature to drop slightly just to around freezing level at 32 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Now let's take a look at our six day forecast. Going into this weekend, we won't be seeing those beautiful fall temperatures anymore. Friday, we are expecting a high of 38 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Saturday, those temperatures will stay about the same with a high of 40 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Sunday, we see another possibility of snow with a 50% chance in the morning, and we should expect a high of 44 degrees during the day. As we move into next week, Monday, we are expecting a relaxing day with some clear skies and a high in the mid 40s. Tuesday, we are looking at a 40% chance of rain and a high in the lower 40s. Wednesday, it looks like it's going to be another day of snow with, shower, with snow showers with a 60% chance throughout the day and a high in the lower 30s. That is all I have for you on this Thursday. Now back to Keaton at the desk. University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital is behind schedule and will not be moving into the new hospital yet. The hospital is disappointed by this news of not being able to move in on December 10th, but believe a late January, early February move in will be possible. The hospital believes this will provide the safest environment and smoothest transition for everyone involved. This Tuesday kicked off the season of giving with Giving Tuesday. Today marks the kickoff of an annual giving event between several local city government charities. It is called the Severson Holiday Charity Challenge, held in honor of Linda Severson, a philanthropist who worked for the Iowa City government. The event will feature different charities that will represent Iowa City, Coralville, and Johnson County, as well as North Liberty. The competition runs from December 1st until January 4th, and the charity that receives the most donations will take home the Severson Cup. If you're looking to get involved or to find out more info, please contact Sarah Walls. A popular bus service used by students will no longer be offering the route that goes through Iowa City. Reporter Mackenzie Cooper has the story. Megabus is a bus service that many students rely on to get home. Many students don't have cars in Iowa City, so the affordability and convenience of Megabus is appealing. Just recently, Megabus announced that they will no longer be offering their Omaha to Chicago route that goes through Iowa City and Des Moines. It's just like a really convenient way, you know, it's got outlets and Wi-Fi and it's so much easier than flying and so much cheaper. In an email from Sean Hughes, the director of corporate affairs for Megabus, he said that Megabus is ending this route because people are taking advantage of low fuel prices and low cost airlines. Students who don't have cars in Iowa City are expressing concerns about how to get home for a weekend. It'll be unfortunate. Not everyone can afford to have a car. It's a luxury, not the right. So it'll cause people to start banking on finding other people for rides and that always gets tricky with classes whereas if there's a set time just to get home like that's so much easier. But students can use other bus services in the Iowa City area to get them home. Reporting from Coralville, this is Mackenzie Cooper, Daily Iowan TV. Ever hate when you're on an airplane and without Wi-Fi and you can't get onto Netflix? All that is changing now that Netflix is going to be going offline. Subscribers can now download shows and movies to watch at any time now. This option was announced yesterday and a number of shows and movies were made available instantly. This includes Breaking Bad, Narcos and Spotlight. Netflix says more downloadable content is coming and at no additional cost. Well, some content that I'm excited about here that we have right here at Daily Iowan TV is Hawkeye Sports. For more, we'll toss it over to Aaron Erickson and Zach Mackey in the sports studio. Guys, what have you got for us? Well, that's right, Keaton. A lot of exciting things. A couple of games against Notre Dame here recently. Yeah, great to see the Hawkeyes welcome Notre Dame last night. Unfortunately, though, it did not come out in their favor. The Iowa women's basketball team took on the number one team in the nation, the University of Notre Dame, last night. And after being down 14 at the end of the first quarter, 
Iowa slowed down and took control. Being down eight points at the end of the half, the Hawkeyes were able to get within two points at that end of the at the end of the or the first three minutes of that third quarter. But some costly mistakes on offense throughout the game put their chances of an upset to bed. And you know, we we score well in every quarter until the fourth quarter, and then we have three field goals. Um, but our composure to start the game, you know, and taking care of the ball and doing a better job crashing the boards. We had one rebound offensively in the first half, so doing a better job on that in the first half and in the second half, you know, it's, it's really, it came down to a scoring issue. I mean, we, we shot the ball better than Notre Dame. Not by much, but we still did. And uh, we just didn't get as many opportunities to shoot it. They had 15 more opportunities, I believe, to shoot the ball than we did. 15 more opportunities. I mean, that's turnovers. It's really what it is. Even though Iowa was not able to come out with a win against the Irish, they still proved just how good of a team they are. And one player specifically showed how Iowa will still be a threat down the stretch. As the underranked talk guys took on the number one team in the nation, Notre Dame, Iowa came out strong and gave the Irish an unexpected tough fought game. Megan Gustin had a double double and led her team to show that they can play with anyone. You know, Megan's double-double, um, the rebounding aspect that we cleared up the turnovers in the second half, um, that we kept fighting. I mean, that, and I'm proud of my kids for that, and it, it sounds kind of simple. You know, of course you should fight, right, every second you're on the floor, but some kids don't. Some people don't. When they're down, they don't. And our kids kept fighting, and I wouldn't expect anything else, but I'm still going to acknowledge it when it's there. Although Gustafson had a double-double and senior Allie Disterhoff was the game-high scorer, the Hawkeyes did have some offensive setbacks throughout the game. You know, we really challenged them in the, in the halftime to hit more O boards, and, and we did. And so I'm proud of them with that. But too many turnovers resulting in too many easy points for Notre Dame. Uh, we're just, we got to value the ball more. Even though Iowa faced the top team in the nation, the Hawkeyes play in many top games each season, and they looked at Notre Dame no different as they would any other team. It's always great for anyone to get experience against top teams. Um, that's going to be the norm in the Big Ten. Big Ten has a lot of teams that are pretty highly ranked, so veterans are used to playing against those caliber teams. I don't think we really mentioned the number one ranking that much leading into this game because we're used to playing, like I said, the top teams. We stuck with Notre Dame um, throughout most of the game, and I think that that really does give us confidence. I mean, again, back in UCLA, we also stuck with them pretty well. And I think um, coming up here um, in the next games, playing against some in-state rivals, I think it's going to give us some energy. The Hawkeyes will be back in Carver Hawkeye Arena on Sunday and Wednesday, taking on their two in-state rivals, Northern Iowa and Iowa State. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Mary-Kate Herrian, Daily Iowan TV Sports. We'll have the coverage from that Northern Iowa game on Tuesday's show. The Big Ten announced their football offensive team awards Wednesday, and the Hawkeyes were represented well, receiving multiple honors. Yes, they were. It started off with junior guard Sean Welsh earning third-team All-Big Ten honors from the coaches and the media, as freshman center James Daniel also earned that third-team All-Big Ten honor from the coaches and the media. Senior tackle Cole Croston earned third-team All-Big Ten from the coaches and was an honorable mention by the media, while junior running back Akram Wadley earned third-team All-Big Ten honors from the coaches and was an honorable mention for the media as well. The Hawkeyes had some more honors to receive as quarterback C.J. Beathard, tackle Ike Betker, and running back LaShawn Daniels Jr., tight end George Kittle, and wide receiver Riley McCarron were all honorable mentions as well. That's all we have for sports today here in the sports studio. Back over there to you at the desk. Joe Ballet's The Nutcracker will premiere at Hanter Auditorium beginning today until Sunday, December 4th. A reimagined version of the famous production set in Chicago before the 1893 World's Fair. These will be preview performances before its world premiere in Chicago. Come check out this newly imagined production of the Nutcracker performance today through Saturday. Showtimes will be 7.30 p.m. tonight, Friday and Saturday, with additional 2 p.m. showings on Saturday and Sunday as well. Tickets can vary between $20 to $75. That's your news for this Thursday morning. Be sure to visit our website, dailyiowan.com, for further coverage of everything happening in the area. You can also grab a copy of today's Daily Iowan paper for more daily news. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Keaton Fuller. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.